Tas, tas. All right, live. Uh, let's take this to the public. Hello, second channel. Probably gonna have to wait a bit for me to get into everything. Um, sorry, just messing with my iPad. Get off this. Um, all right, we're public. Uh, let's get the chat up. Lovely. Fake address. Top chat down there. Everyone's good on the second channel. Uh, just waiting for the people from the main channel to come. Now live streaming. Thought I'd talk about this Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. Um, and I thought I'd respond to a lot of the stupid Five Nights at Freddy's fans. Who were like flooding my comments um, after I made that video? So we'll get into all of that stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna switch on some music for me. What we got here? Oh, come on. My charger for my phone is like so broken, it just won't charge. And um, it won't charge, and it will barely connect. So. Having to use a lot of annoying stuff right now. But yeah, I hope everyone's good. I um, hope you enjoyed the stuff I was saying about Jimmy Dore last time. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Alright. Recently added. Right, Apple Music is just like absolutely broken. That's what I hate about Apple. This is how capitalism is so rubbish. They literally force you to update because they will literally like break your device if you don't update. Like not actually break it, but they'll make it so unusable that you're forced to update it, um, which is really frustrating. So I just want to listen to some music on my iPad, and I can't even can't even do that. Um, I guess I can maybe boot on my Switch and stick on a concert or something. <laughs> Which I sometimes do. One good app that Miss, uh, what did I say? One good app that the Switch has is uh, obviously. Come on, load. All right, fine. Let's just do this. One good thing the Switch has is YouTube, but it doesn't have anything else. All right, there we go. But yeah, we're gonna get into everything today. Did I head up on Twitter? I think I did. Yeah. I don't know what I did with that. Okay, that's just some reaction to it. We'll flick up this tweet as well. Hello, people who've joined. So let's flick the chat over here quick. How's it going, Martin? Thanks for joining. Hello, middle mug. Yep, yeah, the guy resigned. Hi, Lawrence. Thanks for joining. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about it directly yet. Um... Just wait for some more people to join. But yeah, he resigned because we'll get into his explanation. Basically, he got a lot of pushback about his Trump donations. And the community was like ridiculously defending him. I made a whole video about it. Um, also, I don't get the hype with Five Nights at Freddy's. I think it looks absolute trash. Like, why? Out of all the game series and games... Why does this guy seem to have such a cult following? I really don't get it. But yeah, we'll get into all this stuff in a bit. Just wait for some more people to join so I don't have to repeat myself a million times like I usually do. Um, okay, in the, in the chat, who's played Five Nights at Freddy's and does anyone understand... Um, does anyone understand why he has such a cult around in this guy? Like, please enlighten me. This game just looks bad. Like, it always looked bad. And, okay, I'm going to go on a little rant to start with. Um, <laughs> I, I, always say, I always say this to, like, um, people I'm teasing. I'm like, um, I would absolutely hate my children to be obsessed with, like, 
Fortnite or Minecraft or so, some of this. Like, I always say to like my brother, I'm like, your kids are going to be like begging you to play Fortnite and doing Fortnite dances and stuff like that. And I just hate these games that become like these, I don't know if phenomenon is the right word, but like so much in the culture and all the kids just, oh, I hate it. I hate it when loads of kids just love this shit and just like all go, all go on about it. I'm going to tell you like an East versus West thing. Um, when I was in Morocco, I was going through uh, the Casper in Tangier and um, the Casper there is like, it's very weird in that it has like lots of nice restaurants and nice hotels mixed with like quite poor and run down areas. I turn a corner and I see like this building which looks pretty run down. And I see like a light coming out of it. I stick my head in. It's like like eight children, all with their mon- all with a monitor each and a desktop computer playing Grand Theft Auto online together. And it was the most like bizarre thing. I'm in this pretty run down um Casper in, in like um North Africa, and I just turn a corner and here's a bunch of children all playing Grand Theft Auto online together, not even just like one um or two consoles. They each had their own desk with their own desktop. It was pretty funny. But um yeah, it's like um all this stuff in terms of um the Fortnite stuff. Like Fortnite and Minecraft, like I obviously got no hate if you like that stuff. Um but I guess it's the culture around it I really hate. Five Nights at Freddy's is another one. It's like um streamers pick these games up and then every little kid wants to be like the next ninja or like MatPat and they all start making loads of um, videos. So I, I, I'm on this subreddit called YouTubers. Generally, I just go on there to make myself feel better about my own, my own channel and growth. Um, but constantly people want channel reviews and it's literally just like let's plays of like Five Nights at Freddy's, Minecraft and Fortnite for like five hours uh, with them barely talking. I'm like do you just think playing this game is going to make you a successful like let's play youtuber and not to mention like that stuff is so oversaturated anyway it's really hard to even become like you know a, a channel with a moderate following and stuff um but yeah that's what you know um and that's what people were saying it's it's the youtubers who have um made this stuff popular Um, sorry, just checking something. Hmm. All right. Um, sorry, people commenting. I was able to get a PS5 today. I'm hyped. That's nice. I got one on release date, which actually was my birthday, which was cool. <laughs> I buy myself PS5 for my birthday. Um, they're good games, someone's saying. I've never played them. They just look kind of bad. Um... It's weird. It's like watching security cameras with jump scares. People saying I enjoy it for the law. Someone says they're unsubscribing. I don't care. Um, what's your opinion on the situation? Uh, I made a whole video about it. Um, and I can go over some of it. But it's basically my video on Monday I uploaded uh, about the whole issue, basically. He resigned, oh no. <laughs> YouTubers too, the Let's Players, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I said double way about the LGBT thing. He's essentially taking their money and using it to fund their oppression. Like, I could make a video on this tomorrow, but I won't milk the situation, I guess. So Scott is being a piss baby. <laughs> yeah, he couldn't take the criticism, so he's just going to go chill and retire and, uh, you know, get all his nice uh, paychecks from um, from all this stuff. Uh, Retrack, if you want to watch the stream later, I'm going to upload it on my archive channel. Cavernacle Extra is my second channel. Someone saying, um, I never played it. <laughs> this guy needs to go, though. Um, yeah, that's like me. Um, 
reactionary bigot, Irish wild wild hostage says that they looked up to them. That's what a lot of people said in the comments actually in my video. I'm gonna go through the comments of the video I made on it and talk about it. Um, wait a tiny bit longer for more people and then we'll go. But apparently he made loads of like weird evangelical Christian games before he made Five Nights at Freddy's. I was too old. I mean, it's just one of those games that just never, ever appealed to me. Like, I would never want to watch it or even, you know, watch the Let's Plays or, or play it. Um, and and I, I, do, do, does anyone else get this? When something is so popular, uh, I just don't want to... I just don't want to um, watch or play it. So, for example, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad... Um, what else was there? Walking Dead, Fortnite... Five Nights at Freddy's, Minecraft, Warzone. Um, I've just like not touched any of that stuff, and and I don't know if anyone else gets this. When there's such like an overwhelming consensus that something is like absolutely amazing, and you have to play it, and it's the best thing ever, um, I immediately think it can't. I, I'm I'm sure it's like solid, but like if it has this much mass appeal. It probably isn't doing anything that interesting. So, like, Fortnite I have played, like, once. And it's, like, obviously a solid game. But it's boring for me. Like, run around um, for, like, half an hour and then get sniped in the back, like, afterwards or something. Um, Warzone I've never played. Um, game of Thrones I've never watched. Breaking Bad I've never watched. Um, Walking Dead I've never watched. And the reason is, is I put off it by like people. People were genuinely saying, Game of Thrones was like the best thing that has ever existed, and um, and it's just like, and and everyone I knew loved it. And, and when if you have like quite a diverse like friendship group, like I have like multiple different ones, like in terms of people I knew when I was very young, people I like I'm still friends with and stuff. And when they're all going, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever watched. I'm just like. Is it though? So like, if you, whose opinion I don't respect, and someone whose opinion I respect a bit more, you both say it's like the best thing ever, then like, is it really gonna be the best thing ever? I don't know. Um, and that's why I absolutely loved it when Game of Thrones just went downhill and everyone on Twitter, like the consensus was it's now bad. <laughs> it is crazy how Game of Thrones essentially like evaporated from pop culture so quickly because of how bad it was. Um, so that's like a lot, a lot of stuff. So, um, the th things can, things just get crazily overhyped. People often say I'm like a hipster who won't watch stuff. I do watch stuff. Like I like, um, the Clone Wars animated series. I always, you know, I've watched that for years. Um, I'll watch the Marvel stuff. Like I've been watching the Winter Soldier stuff. I'm only, like, on the third episode. And it's decent. Like, really solid for a TV show. I'm actually really worried about... I've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. About Disney Plus's budget really crushing the competition. And it will become just, like, the, the, the streaming service. On top of owning the film industry. Um, Loki looks good. And I'll definitely check that out at some point. Um, I guess people aren't talking about... But that's the difference. It is also... These Marvel things... People aren't talking about them like they're the best thing that has ever come out. Whereas with Game of Thrones, that very much was the opinion, like, this is absolutely the best thing ever. And there can be no fault with it, and there's no flaws. Every episode is amazing. Let's all watch it all the time. I don't know. Um, can't see myself ever watching it, to be honest. Even stuff like The Witcher series, like, that was overhyped so bad. And I like The Witcher, so I watched it, and I was like, that's a solid show, but, like, it's not anything special. You are a hipster, though. I mean, I'm not a hipster. Like, I watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for years. I watched, like, loads of, like, more um, mainstream shit. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Star Wars as well. Like, I'm not a total hipster. Uh, I've watched most of the Marvel movies, too. Uh, I just don't rave about them like the best thing ever, basically. Invincible, yeah. <laughs> I probably won't do that, either. Um... If people, if people ever want recommendations for good stuff that is very, very, like, under-hyped and not even covered, um, I can give you a couple good TV shows. Um, 
And there's also... The thing is, right, so Vikings... I never knew how popular Vikings was. I think someone was telling me it's got a really international audience. I won, like, season three. And I like it enough. Like, um, I like it because of the history stuff. But that is one that's, like, seriously popular that I'm watching as well. And it's very, very, like, universally praised, especially um, the first five seasons or so. So I'm not, like, opposed to really good stuff. Um... Give me them recommendations. Okay, um, so Tom, for the most, ob not obscure, for the one that you probably haven't watched or heard of, um, the director of Drive, who was in Death Stranding, is called uh, Nick, Nick Reffin, and he made an Amazon show starring Miles Teller, and um, he's a, Miles Teller is like the main famous actor in that, um, called Too Old to Die Young. And it's uh, basically made sort of with like the team he's done things like Drive With. So same composer, really good soundtrack. Um, it's both really, really good at some points and just really fucked up and weird in other points. Uh, 10 episodes on Amazon, one season. They didn't even advertise it. I, I don't know why they even funded this show. Um, but check out Two Old to Die Young, Miles Teller, um, Amazon Prime exclusive. That's one. Um, Mr. Robot, obviously I've got the mask uh, on my mirror. Mission Robot, that's probably my favourite show. Um, obviously, really, really highly rated by the people who watch it. It just doesn't have a massive audience. Seriously recommend it, and it's got very good politics, thankfully. Um, Mr. Robot is a very left-leaning show. It's uh, made by a guy who says it's inspired by the Arab Spring and Occupy. Uh, Rami Malek is amazing in it. Christian Slater is really good. It's just, you know, very, very good show, and it's not only just good, it's, like, creatively, it's amazing, like, cinematography... Uh, music choices of like music as well that's one i couldn't recommend enough that's on amazon as well um and then as a spin-off from that homecoming the series the two seasons based on the podcast homecoming season one is made by the guy who did mr robot starring julia roberts filmed by the same guy who did mr robot as well a couple of mr robot actors in there uh season two is a different person it's like janelle what's her name janelle monet the singer is like the main character both solid um if you need something when you're done with Mr. Robot. And not obscure, but Boardwalk Empire, I feel like, really went under the radar for a lot of people because it ended before like social media really exploded. But Boardwalk Empire, um, give that a go, 100%. Um, and then just for good like war stuff, obviously, like Band of Brothers is a classic. The Pacific, with Rami Malek in it as well. Um, really solid. So... Uh, yeah, uh, I'll give them, them a go. Uh, obviously, like, Mad Men is something I love as well. And that's pretty ma that's pretty mainstream, but, like, more with older people. And then, if I give one more recommendation, if I have to tell you guys to watch a TV show, what, what do I really like for TV? I've given you the obscure one. I've given you my favourite one. Oh, yeah, Fargo is always good. I'm, I'm, I've, I watched the first episode of uh, season four. I need to finish that. I like, Fargo is so good. Um, but, yeah, Mr. Robot... It's what my avatar on YouTube is based on, what my little background thing is based on, like the text and stuff. So yeah, there you go. Fargo, Mr. Robot, Mad Men, Boardwalk Empire, Too Old to Die Young, that's the fucking weird one. And Deadwood is a classic HBO one as well. Deadwood's solid. So, um... Okay, so... Got a hundred people watching now, so we'll probably get into it. Um, people tell me to watch Invincible. I maybe won't, but it does look good. To be fair, like I'll admit it looks good, but like now everyone's got into it. Like I don't know, I feel like I'm missing some. Maybe like a couple years or s season four, Good and Fargo. I like it so far. It's only one episode though. Deadwood, yeah, Deadwood is is old school. Um, I haven't watched the movie though, which I really really want to. Yeah, cocksuckers, but that's literally all they say. Um, Deadwood, fun fact, it's the only... Oh, fun fact. Bill from The Last of Us 1, uh, main character in uh, Deadwood. Okay. Let's go. Uh, we've. Uh, I'll take some more... Co I'll, obviously, like you guys who are regular, regularly here, you'll know that I'll take your comments throughout and stuff. Um, so I will go back and look at them, but now we're going to talk about what the title of this video is. So basically, um, like my video on Monday was about, um, Scott Cawthon, or Caw 
however I said it in the video, whatever. Um, he basically, let's just use the Reddit actually. He basically um, was exposed for donating to the GOP and uh, Donald Trump's run for president in 2020. Um, so... Let's let's go for the whole thing. Uh, let's let's uh let's read everything. So, can you guys see this on my YouTube video? All right, you can see it. Great. Um, so here you have his donations: Kevin McCarthy, um, Donald Trump, two thousand, Tulsi Gabbard, two thousand five hundred. Then you got Ben Carson, twenty fifteen. But then you got also National Republican Senatorial Committee, twenty twenty. Devin Nunes, twenty twenty. Joe Collins, Mitch McConnell, five grand. So he maxed out his contributions and he gave Mitch McConnell the most, gave Donald Trump some as well. Um, people call him out because there's a lot of LGBT people in the five night at Freddie's community. So he basically said, um, so what part should I read? Okay, he says here, I exercised my right and my duty as an American citizen to vote and support the candidates who I felt could best run the country for everyone. That's something I won't apologise for. So this guy's clearly an idiot already, thinking like Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, all these awful people are the best people to run the country. Um, but then his statement gets a bit more rich when he... Sorry, I, I took a lot of time out to just talk about his stuff. Basically saying, because he, he donated some minority can candidates and Tulsi Gabbard that he donates to a spectrum of political candidates. And yes, I support President Trump because I felt he was the best man to fuel a strong economy and stand up to America's enemies abroad, of which there are many, even if they were candidates who had a better thing to say uh, to the LGBT community and bigger promises to make, I believe that their stances on other issues would end up doing more greater harm to those communities in good. See, this is how he rationalises this stuff. It's totally ridiculous. He thinks Donald Trump overall and the GOP gaining absolute power and him helping through donations would be better for gay people, trans people, um you know, anyone else in the LGBT community, he thinks that. When the GOP are literally waging a cultural war on trans people at the moment, including President Trump banning trans people from the military, and he thinks that's going to make trans people's lives better, how? So he's going to fund that agenda? So he's going to take the money off his, like, well-known community that has a lot of LGBT people in it, and then fund it, and, well, then use it to fund their oppression, sort of guy this guy is won't apologize for that and then um all right this one this makes me laugh this bit i'm a republican christian pro-life and i believe in god i also believe in equality and in science and in common sense despite what some may say all those things can go together that's not an apology or promise to change it's the way it's always been now you know as an, i said in the video as an atheist you know, I don't believe religion and science can often go together, but I'm not an idiot. I recognise some of the best scientists in like human history have been religious people and are still religious people. So that's fine. But, you know, you believe in God, that's fine, whatever. But I'm a Republican who believes in equality and science. That doesn't go together. Republicans and their current iteration, not that they've always been like this pretty much, but their current iteration is literally waging war on like minority groups it's also campaigning on these things and like i always say with the difference between uk conservatives and america and american conservatives is american is british conservatives pretend they're progressive in social ways american prog american progressive american conservatives are literally mask off they campaign on their hatred for minorities and for the LGBT community. So you cannot be a Republican who believes in equality because the Republican Party literally campaign on not being for equality. So that's a load of crap as well. Um, he was saying about retiring here. So his, com his community literally had like a civil war about it. And if you guys want to go watch this video, um, my Monday video, basically I'm going through loads of people supporting him, doing insane mental gymnastics to somehow justify that actually donating to hateful political candidates somehow isn't the same thing as saying that stuff or believing that stuff and saying that because he did it, it's just his right as an American. It's like voting for someone. Um, it's a difference of, you know, him being a Christian conservative and him actually funding the worst Republicans in the country. That's the difference here. And these guys are trying to act like it's not different. Um, but then a lot of people disagreed with him. The he one of the head mods resigned because they're transgender. Now, um, 
let's get into his update and then we can read a bit into his community and stuff because they're all still, you know, pretty much supporting him. Uh, sorry, one sec. Okay, uh, just checking, you can see the stuff. Um, one sec, I'm going to zoom in a bit. All right, there you go. All right, let's get into this. So um, he resigns today and he writes this. Um, before I say anything else, check out this amazing piece of fan art. Pretty amazing stuff. I have boxes and boxes of artwork like this from fans that I've saved over the years. I've tried to answer it to as many letters as I could and apologize. apologize to anyone that I've missed somehow. Someday, when I have a bigger living room, maybe I'll make a giant collage of all the fan art I've collected. I've had a blessed, fulfilling and rich career. I've been shown great kindness and I've tried to show great kindness in return. I've tried to make some good games and I've witnessed the creation of possibly the most creative and talented fan base on the planet. But on the seventh anniversary of the game's first trailer, and as I realised I was approaching my mid-30s when I created the series, I'm now, I'm now approaching my mid-40s. I realise that I miss a lot of things that I got to focus on before the game became such a, such a success. I miss making games for my kids. I miss doing it for fun. And I miss making RPGs even though I stink at it. All this to say is that I'm retiring. I've been shown tremendous love and support over the last week. A lot of which has come from the LGBTQ community. The kindness shown to me has been surreal. Is this the end of the game? No, this just means that someone else will eventually be running the show. Someone of my choosing and someone that I trust. We will have to wait to see how it all plays out. But an announcement will be made at some point. I have six kids now. I love them dearly. They're my whole world and my whole universe. I want to focus my attention on them, focus on protecting them and spend my time making things for them. I will only ask the fan base to respect my decision. I will still be around, just not in the capacity I used to be. What a blessed career I've had. What wonderful people I've met and what a tremendous blessing to be able to know all of you. Thank you so much. Now, so he's retiring from the game community. Now, um, most of the community here on Reddit, let's see if I can zoom in a bit more. Like my hay fever. I don't know if anyone else has bad allergies this time of year. Um, all right. Let's sort by controversial because, like I said in my video, the people actually criticizing him are the ones, you know, are getting really criticized. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. Ugh. Have some coffee instead. All right, hopefully that, that cues me for it. All right, we're sort of like controversial. So let's see. Also, Reddit, oh, for fuck's sake, Reddit on desktop is so awful. I don't know if anyone else feels this way. Like, I, it's so much better on mobile. All right, so let's see. All right, let's have a look. So I'm just reading some. Okay, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> um, okay, here's one. Uh, Notorious again saying, look at cute drawing. I don't know, it's a small fortune to politicians with classic conservative anti-LGBT agendas, but let me just talk about how the LGBT, uh, LGBTQ community loves me right now. Last nine wishes to not go out as a dude who donated a small fortune to these politicians. It's no coincidence he dipped right after this happened. Someone saying, it's clear you have no idea what you're talking about. He donated to good organisations several times before. The Republican donations are mere pennies compared to it. Can you blame him for retiring? His family was docs and sent death threats. Um, and then, this is a fair comment, donating to charities doesn't instantly make all your actions good. He still donated tens of thousands of political candidates who are anti-LGBT and to many that isn't excusable. So um, a lot of these people are very sad. Now, um, if you go on Twitter as well, So they cancelled him for a political opinion. See, this is this is the difference. I was saying it in my video. They're all saying, oh, they cancelled him for being a Republican. They cancelled him for being a, you know, his political opinions. Um, so saying he deserves a retirement, everything like that. Um, all right, whatever. So, yeah. These guys all love him, but let's get into the comments on my video. Sort by new, because that's, uh, you know, so this one's lovely. Some guy telling me he's going to kill me. Um, so, all right, let's get, I want to get to some arguments. All right, so here's one. 
Um, that's Scott's opinion. Deal with it. If he believes or believes in something, let him believe. Uh, your arguments are basically saying, hey, he did this in 2020 before anything bad happened with people. So that means that the bad things that happened now, he totally knew about the bad things that happened in 2021 and 2020. Like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Some people were legit using the argument that because um, he did this in 2020, that's actually a long time ago. People were also saying he didn't know that these Republican politicians didn't like the LGBT community. And these people, like the political opinion things is so ridiculous, right? And this this is this is where I, I differentiate between the two things that are happening, right? So if this guy was a Republican who voted for Trump, that is one thing. Now, I think this is obviously really bad. Or, you know, you don't even have to be a Republican. You know, re- not all Republicans have to vote for Trump and not all Republicans did, even though, you know, most of them did. Um, I understand that to a degree because of like the mob mentality in America where you just like vote Republican, you vote for the Republican candidate or you vote for the Democratic candidate. And that's whatever. That's one thing, right? Still think that's really bad when you have an LGBT fan base, but that's one thing. He didn't just vote in the presidential election for the Republican candidate and voted for Donald Trump. He both donated to Trump, to Devin Nunes, to um, Kevin McCarthy, to Mitch McConnell as well. He maxed out the amount of political donations you can do. That is completely different because that's not just, I endorse your agenda because I voted for it, or I voted for you because I thought you were better than the other guy, but I don't really like you. He literally says he believed Trump's agenda would benefit the LGBT community overall because he was the best candidate for president. And then he gave thousands upon thousands of dollars to GOP candidates. That is not just, I support you over the other guy. That's, I seriously agree with your agenda so much so I'm willing to part with thousands of dollars to ensure you get into power. That's not a political opinion in in the sense that it's not like I chose him over Trump. Oh, I chose Trump over Biden. It's literally like, I want this radical conservative agenda implemented. This is the way I can help the most in terms of money. I'm literally giving the maximum amount of money to the GOP candidates running for president to make this country a more hostile place for minorities, including the LGBT community. So because a lot of his community are in this community, you're taking their money and, like I said, you're using it to fund their oppression by these politicians who don't even hide it. They tell you, they campaign on being anti-transgender, anti-trans rights. They, you know, wage this culture war. So even if they do not win the political battle, they poison the culture for transgender people and other minorities. So these guys thinking he's been cancelled for voting or having certain politics... That's not what he's been cancelled for. And he hasn't been cancelled. He did this by his own, you know, choice and stuff. It's not a political, like, difference of political opinions. It's not that he's for small government or he's for less taxes or he's for all this other shit. It's actually, like, these people were in power for four years, sometimes more with Mitch McConnell. They did everything they could to hurt the people who like your game. And then you still gave him money. This isn't Donald Trump in 2016. This is Donald Trump in 2020 when he's done the Muslim ban, when he's done the trans military ban. Then you give him money. And I don't know if the donations went back further. There was the 2015 one for Ben Carson. I don't know if that's the only one. But again, he saw what Donald Trump was. He saw Donald Trump brutalizing peaceful protesters and journalists. He saw Donald Trump's, um, you know, FBI and intelligence services stealing people and throwing them into black vans. He saw Donald Trump essentially using tactics you normally see in like authoritarian dictatorships. And he said, I want more of that. How can I make it um, happen? So it's not like these people are saying us cancelling him for having a simple difference of opinion on like economic policy or how do we deal with China or the Middle East or something. Um... So, he's entitled to whatever opinion he has. The thing is, when you cultivate a community who support your products and buy your products based on making it like a safe space for marginalised groups, then you don't just get to, like, fund people who will do this to them. Anyway, I'm going to get into some of your comments now. Um, oh, fuck, I hate you, man. 
All right, so what are people saying? Um, all right, so I'm just checking where... Use old Reddit, yeah, maybe I should. <laughs> this guy had a notch character art. Yeah, exactly. Um... So I'm just going up some more. Um, <laughs> someone's saying Trump was more popular in 2016. That's what I always make the difference between them because I can understand why people voted for Trump in 2016 a lot more than I can in 2020. Someone said they want Deadwood way too young. Yeah, that's not a show you want to show your kids. Um, all right, uh, going through the comments. So Video Game Master saying, the funny part is the LGBT community, I guess you left it out, Enjoy a lot of products owned by corporations that donate insane amounts of money to Republicans, yet they don't bat an eye. Hypocrites. Yeah, but Video Game Masters, the difference is, is Five Night at Freddy's, like, literally is this guy. And he's, like, creating this community. He's very involved in the community. It's not like the head of Coca-Cola or Nike is, like, on Reddit every day, um, in the Nike subreddit, talking about, like, raising money for, you know, LGBT charities and how LGBT people are welcoming the community and stuff. It's not like they do that. And yeah, but the difference is Five Nights at Freddy's is a video game. It's a video game community. If you're, you know, drinking or eating food from a shitty company like Nestle, for example, it's a different thing. You know, there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. It doesn't mean you should just not even try. But most companies who sell you products are extremely shitty companies. I can't think of many that are ethical or good. Even like Ben and Jerry's, which is a lot better than most. Um, I think it has some sort of connection to like Israeli companies or something. I was reading, was it? Was it buying Israeli water or something? I'm not sure. So I'm reading some more stuff. Um, wow, this guy is some SJW shit fuck. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know how people find streams. Do streams get promoted? Like, I, I only thought it was videos. Um, dude, aren't you in the UK? How do you even know how complicated this division is? It spreads like cancer. I mean, like, I don't know how maybe in the UK it makes me not be able to recognise political divisions in other countries. Um, it's one thing to be a Republican. It's another to donate money to bigots. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so this guy seems to think I like Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, I'm just glad you guys are ruining the things you love. Just as much as you ruin everything for everyone. I don't like Five I think Five Nights at Freddy's looks like total garbage. So I couldn't give a shit. Uh, while he's at it, can he just please remove the games? Like, so no one can ever play them again. That would make me happy. Um, because they look like total trash. And it looks like a game um, just for like the game theorist to stream or something. Um... Why not cancel Disney? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I guess you got you've never watched my channel, but uh, I went on a big rant about Disney being really shitty the other day, like how it's just like taking over entertainment completely, and it's really crap. Um, Nobody is cancelling anybody. Actions have consequences, and when you donate to hateful people, the people who are in the receiving end of the hate will be upset. Obviously, yeah, exactly. Cancel. 
I, I've spoken before about how cancel culture doesn't actually exist in the way people think it does. So loads of shitty comedians are saying, oh, I can't tell jokes anymore because of cancel culture. But it's like, no, you just told shitty jokes and now you're scared you can't rely on like racial stereotypes and bigotry to try and be funny. Whereas like a lot of humour and a lot of good comedians don't need this type of crap. There's a difference between being like on the edge of like comedy if it's political comedy and just being bigoted and trying to be funny and stuff. And also if cancel culture, it's like Gina Carano, it's like, it's clear that Disney warned her to stop doing this stuff. And the wording of Disney's statement was like, we didn't renew her contract, but people acted like she was yanked off the Mandalorian set. She knew beforehand she wasn't getting her contract renewed because of what she said. And now she gets a cushy gig with Ben Shapiro's company, right? Same with this Scott guy. He's not being cancelled. You saw the reaction of the community. They largely supported him. He would have alienated some people, but they largely supported him. He's probably doing this for an economic reason. He steps down. He gets the royalties. Someone else runs it. Most of the fan base stay in place. They don't give a shit. So that's what's happening here. These guys aren't being... You you don't get cancelled for bad speech. Getting criticism for bad politics is not cancel culture, right? Ben Shapiro, if cancel culture existed, this guy is like, you know, has put out in his his career some insanely inflammatory racist statements, bigoted statements, which he often doubles down on, especially when he's talking about Arabs and Palestinians. If cancel culture existed, if this woke mob could take down anyone we wanted for like wrong think, why do people like Ben Shapiro have an absolutely humongous platform on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube? If us leftists had all this power to weaponize so-called cancel culture, then why haven't we done this? There's there's so many people just like Ben Shapiro who like openly say bigoted and racist things and have massive platforms that are only getting bigger. If cancel culture exists in the way these Republicans think it is, why haven't we taken them all down? Think about this war on critical race theory. It's literally people using um, Nazi conspiracy theories. Okay, I want to cancel them. They're all cancelled now. Let's get a couple of people to say it with me. Or something. It doesn't work like that. Being criticised for bad opinions and having responsibility for bad opinions and controversial things you said is not cancel culture. So that Megan Rapinoe, Rapinoe whatever her name is, the American footballer, Uh, It just came out on Twitter that she wrote something that's pretty offensive to Asians, right? Like, 10 years ago. Um, Asking for her to apologise and criticising her for that is not cancel culture. She can own that, she can apologise, and people can choose to forgive her or not, but that's not cancel culture. That's just criticising someone for shitty opinions and shitty comments, right? If, um, you know, uh, if someone pulled up some old thing I said and it was like yo like this is really bad and then a bunch of my community were like Cavanacle, why the hell did you say this this is really offensive I could say sorry you know I was I was wrong back then I was more bigoted back then whatever that's not me being cancelled and if people don't want to watch my stuff after that that's not me being cancelled that's me being held accountable for opinions that the community I've grown myself don't like <coughs> and that's the thing don't grow a community that is welcoming to LGBT people, which you say yourself, LGBT people are welcome in, and then donate to politicians who are literally fighting a war to make their lives worse. All right, taking more comments. Sorry, I'm just reading them. Um, what are people saying? Oh, <laughs> oh, it's the it's the night it's the Nike Nike thing. Yeah, so technically Nike is the correct pronunciation, right? Because it's like, is it the Greek god or the Roman god Nike? Um, but in the UK, people just call it Nike. I know that sounds weird, but people just call it Nike. No one calls it Nike. Um, but yeah, it's a UK thing. Type it in if you don't believe me. So, uh, just Mahab, 
Mahabibi. Uh, Five Night at Freddy's Stands can't understand the point of lobbying a politician. Lobbying McConnell, of all people, is for anything but the betterment of the country. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. It's like, um, his statement was so totally ridiculous because of the fact it was like, yeah, um, endorsing these people and voting for Trump will overall make the country better for LGBT people. And it's like, what world do you live in? Like, what? show me the policies that Trump proposed that will make LGBT people's lives better. Well, I can show you policies he's already done which have made their lives a lot worse. It's just, yeah, totally ridiculous. Um, I, I'm fine with cancelling Disney. Yeah, sure, let's go for it. <laughs> I don't understand why people on the right think leftists are like stands for Disney or something. Like, I really don't get it. Um, all right, so read some more comments. Um... All right, so I've already read, read these ones. Um, people who are against cancel culture are against free speech. Yeah, exactly. It's like hide hide criticism for my shitty opinions. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, isn't it excuse to the right that the idea of cancel culture that pushed today doesn't exist? It's simply fear of being caught in 4K doing bad stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, that socialism done far right got caught um, saying loads of bigoted stuff and then people were obviously mad at him because he's pretending to be some authority on socialism while privately in Discord like a year ago writing loads of bigoted garbage and we're not like cancelling him to say you should go you know you should go away from our community if you're going to do that stuff literally like one year ago and then pretend like you were just being an edgelord <laughs> Abby Shapiro is about to do a playthrough of the game and talk about his conservative themes. <laughs> um, all right, read some more comments. Um, in Mexico, we say Nike as you did. Oh, okay, cool. It's not just um, it's not just an English thing. Hey, Tommy, I think the real reason Corfon donated to GOP is because he wants those sweet tax cuts. He doesn't care about LGBT rights. Yeah, uh, thanks so much for the donation, by the way, Sentinel. I really, really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, that's that's another fact, though, of course. You know, the reason I feel like he's retiring is because he wants to keep his money. And if he stays as the face of, of the franchise, people might be put off because of his donation. But obviously, uh, the tax cuts as well. Tax cuts for his nice fortune he's made of, um, you know, LGBT community and their fans and stuff. So Video Game Artists is saying Ben Shapiro is one of them. I don't really get it. There's loads of people like Ben Shapiro who even hate Ben Shapiro. I don't, you know, cancel culture does not exist. Conservatives just have, you know, a higher proportion of really offensive beliefs that people just don't like. Like Donald Trump didn't get cancelled off Twitter. He was literally like inciting violence, which was against their regulation and stuff. Um, and it's like <laughs> some guy, some, some, um, some columnists, columnists in the UK recently lost their job for like racism and bigotry and then people were describing it as cancel culture. It's like they were literally tweeting racist stuff and lost their job because of it. If At my old job, if I started writing loads of racist stuff and they found out, they'd fire me. That's not being cancelled. <laughs> cancel, what, that's what I mean. Cancel culture just doesn't exist. The way we talk about it. If you want to talk about cancel culture and the way these guys think this stuff of this exists. Think about that one Jewish journalist who was at the Associated Press who lost her job because she was involved in Palestinian rights activism as a student. So they literally fired her. That's like cancel culture as you guys understand it in that she's being censored and kicked out of her job for beliefs that are totally normal and actually good because you're advocating for human rights and she's a Jewish person as well and they still were saying that she's basically an anti-Semite and she should be kicked out. Um, video game master saying is, uh, is it any of our business? Do we live in a democracy? We don't. We, well, we do, well, isn't this the principle of democracy in a free market world, which capitalists love? If the guy who makes the game is using the profits of the game to fund politicians who will hurt me, why would I continue to buy his products? As an individual in a you know consumer capitalist market, I choose not to give this guy my money 
because that's my my choice in like a democracy as well. It's my choice to do what I please with it. So isn't that a democracy? If I'm so if I'm a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, I find this very offensive. I'm never going to buy another one of his products. And I do not want to give this guy money, which he often used for political donations to politicians who want to destroy my life. Then that's my choice. And I don't know why conservatives hate that. It, conservatives burn Nike shoes because they did an advertising campaign with Colin Kaepernick. Surely they love this stuff. If I don't want to buy your products because you're a shitty company, you didn't want to buy company. You you didn't want to buy products um, from a company because it did like woke politics. And even though it's totally ridiculous, that's your right as this consumer in this capitalist marketplace. But it's the right of these people in the Five Nights at Freddy's community to not buy this stuff anymore. And I don't know why that gets people mad. It's not cancel culture. You guys didn't like Colin Kaepernick taking a knee and being on the face of Nike. We don't like people like this taking money from uh, an LGBT safe community and then using it to fund their oppression. And at the very least, if you do not agree with that, surely you understand how that's pretty similar. Hi, Katie. Thanks for joining. Uh, it was a nightmare. Oh, no. What What was the worst part? Have you got any more horror stories? <laughs> um, <laughs> video Game Masters, I, like I said, if, if this Scott guy just voted for Trump, that's one thing. Because that's like a binary choice. If you're going to vote, it's Biden or Trump, right? And I still think that's bad. But like I also said, it's a difference in a presidential election voting for one candidate or the other. Then it's endorsing this guy's agenda and then maxing out your political donations for the year. And that says a lot of different things. It's not like reluctantly voting for someone. It's actually like, I like Trump. I like his agenda. I don't give a shit about my community. Here is loads of money, Mitch McConnell and Trump. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, can't wait for Israel to be cancelled. Uh, yeah, the cancel culture doesn't exist f for for anyone who supports Israel. It exists for everyone, like lots of people who support Palestine, though. Sorry, just three more comments. Um, Nike, you damn red coat. No, Nike. <laughs> If if I said Nike in England, people would be like, "What the fuck? Are you, what the fuck are you saying?" <laughs> if I swear my my friends would be like, "Yeah, I've got some nice new uh, Nike shoes," I'd be like, "What Nike? Nike?" <laughs> um, all right, so we're in some more stuff. Um, yeah, you, YouTube literally advertised Stephen Crowder on my channel when I put ads in my videos. It's actually it's that so mad. Um, did I see Kalinsky on Rogan? No. I don't have Spotify. Can you even listen to podcasts on Spotify if you don't have Spotify? <laughs> well, socialism done left like Grandad did the Bay of Pigs, so that's something I found out later, which is pretty funny. Thirty-five k, yeah, finally I hit thirty-five k. I'll I'll do a thirty-five k stream um on Tuesday because I don't like to celebrate a new milestone before like it's the sub. Um, the sub rate isn't significantly over just in case it goes back down uh, but yeah 35k we did it in about uh, two months nearly exactly I think it was two months yesterday since I was on 30k so um, yeah very good uh, very hard grind <laughs> it feels like very hard grind and uh, yeah thank you for all the support 35k that's amazing I was on on the 1st of January I was on 13k um and now, yeah, it's been amazing growth. Loads of Patreon growth. The views have been mad. So, yeah, all that stuff's great. So, thank you. Thank you, everyone who subscribed. Especially people who've been here longer than a, <laughs> longer than a couple of weeks, I guess. Um, yeah, but King J, like, of course, I don't endorse people wishing death on him. Like, if you're just insane, a sane individual, why would you even be saying that shit about him anyway? Uh, obviously, that stuff's awful. I've had that done to me and everything. But, um... But I mean, I'm not going to obscure the issue by talking about that stuff instead of talking about him trying to escape responsibility and um, 
you know, just that like it's not a big deal, really. Sorry, I'm reading more comments. Um, about Gina Carano, I think in that case, uh, they even knew about it before hiring her. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, It's always funny when more progressive people like Review Tech. Yeah, but Review Tech doesn't get personally offended. He, the thing is, Review Tech is weird because he used to be like hardcore anti-feminist, anti-SJW. Um, thankfully, he's changed a lot. Uh, it was funny when he came out with the Bernie Sanders video, but he got so much hate from his audience. But um, the the only good thing actually, um, the Review Tech did make a had a big fight with the quartering recently, which was quite funny. Um, so um, yeah Cornel West not getting his tenure for supporting Palestinian human rights that is like re you know real um, that's like a real manifestation of what the right thinks cancer culture is tea is yum yum I don't drink tea it's, co it's coffee <laughs> Can we talk about bigger issues? I mean, I just talk about what the discourse is usually. I mean, I made like five videos in a row, in a row about Israel and I've got another one coming for next week. Sorry, read some more comments. Um Sorry, I'm getting so many. It's hard it's hard to I'm I'm so famous. <laughs> I'm so famous like I just can't keep up with the comments. Um, all right, sorry, I was literally just reading one. When I get home, I was shit. Okay, good. Um, all right. Sorry, people are talking. Um, uh, hey, Cam, have you watched Hakeem before? No, I haven't watched Hakeem before. Yeah, the problem with me, I don't actually watch many political YouTubers. So I follow lots of people on Twitter and I like help like their stuff and everything. Um, and we have like fairly good online relationships. But yeah, I really don't watch a lot of different um, YouTubers. Um, to be honest, when I'm not making videos, I really don't want to be engaging in politics too much. Um, so I, I normally just read Twitter for politics. I don't watch videos. Um, Sentinel saying Carthon's donations are a form of class warfare when he can donate bribe politicians to boost his fortune while pressing those he exploits yeah exactly that's it and people might say like it's not much compared to the money he has but he maxed out his donations he, he never had to do that but it's clear he wants this agenda implemented in the United States um Did you ever have to stop playing a game because it was too offensive? I mean, I've never played a game that was too offensive. Some people have told me, and um, this one was a weird one. Let me know what you guys think. Some people told me they had to stop playing The Last of Us because you killed dogs in it. And I'm like, yeah, I get it's not nice to kill like realistically animated dogs, but you are like brutally killing humans. And I mean, like, I, I find it kind of weird to be okay to kill... And in The Last of Us, they, you know, they, they call for their friends and they, like, really scream on the floor because it's meant to be making a point, kind of, about video game violence but or just general violence. But um, the dog stuff's weird. It's like, you'll draw the line at killing animals, which are, don't really show up that much in the game, but killing humans loads is okay? I don't know. But no, I haven't played a game that's too offensive to me. So read more comments. Um, Fernando Luna saying that uh, the right always complains about cancellation, but use it to silence anything and bothers them. They're usually people with the largest platforms and a lot of money. Aren't, yeah, like, aren't they trying to cancel Ilhan Omar for totally misrepresenting her comments? And even the misrepresentation was like totally right anyway, trying to get her kicked off committees and stuff like that. So 
that's the thing with the right. They love cancel culture, like fire this people, fire this people. Um, don't let, you know, no criticism of it. Even at the moment, look how they're treating Liz Cheney because she's not trying to be like, even though she's an awful, awful person, going along with the total lunacy in the Republican Party. They're literally trying to get rid of her. That guy, what was his name? Was it like Justin Armesh, who like was a congressman who came out against Trump and then they just threw loads of money to get rid of him and put in someone who was pro-Trump. And these are the guys who are complaining about so-called cancel culture. Um... Um, <laughs> dogs, humans. I, I don't really get it, to be honest. I, I mean, I, if if you can't take killing either, like, that's fair enough, but, like, killing a lot of dogs... Like, in The Last of Us, I've, I've just recently finished the Ellie campaign on my, like, second playthrough. Uh, I'd say you kill about, like, eight or nine dogs, and but you don't have to kill them either, so I don't really understand that. Um, but then it obviously humanizes the dogs in, in like the other campaign with Abby, so you feel a lot worse for doing it. Um, <laughs> it's like when people watch a war movie, concentration camps, and all of it, but the movie with the dog that dies is too much. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? I guess maybe because Animal is more innocent, but obviously like a lot of innocent civilians die in movies as well. Um, I find it weird you don't use night mode on Twitter. I actually used to only use night mode on everything, but um, basically, because I, I developed bad neurological problems starting in 2019. Thankfully, they've gotten a lot better recently, but um, a lot of the time when reading something, it would leave like horrible lines in my vision, um, and it would be a lot worse when I use dark mode with the white on the black, so it's just better for me to have light mode on even though yeah i do prefer prefer um prefer dark mode i just don't use it anymore sorry more comments oh shit what is going on in the comments um what are we talking about now this is all planned <laughs> about lenin would have voted for biden <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Uh, Tommy, what is your favourite story in a video game? And it's not a bad question. Um, genuinely, last, I'm making a video on it tomorrow because it's the one year anniversary since Last of Us 2 came out. Um, so I'm just going to recap like the absolute insanity that was the hysterical reaction um, to the game. But uh, Last of Us 2 genuinely um, is one of my favourite narratives. And why I like it so much is because it manipulates your feelings so well in that you... Spoilers for Last of Us 2, like, if you guys care about that. Actually, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to talk about it broadly. So don't worry, I'm not going to spoil it. But I like The Last of Us so much because as, like, a revenge story, um, it's very good at manipulating you in that when you're playing as Ellie, you're, like, mowing down all these people and it feels, like, very justified because of what happens at the start that gives you such an incentive to do this. And... And even when you find out she does this despite knowing what a certain character did at the end of the first game. And it, it constantly messes with your expectations of what this game is going to be. And I didn't know you played as another character as well. Like, I had no spoilers, which was a great thing because the game shocked me. But I was so happy because I knew it was taking chances and taking risks. And then with the second campaign, uh, obviously I love the character. Uh, Abby is such a great character. But um, just the way it keeps messing with your expectations and, and the way it humanises the other side, the enemies in the first half of the game, I, I just really liked because characters like Manny and Owen um, and Abby are just such great characters. And when you find out all this, it just, it just hits, it makes everything a hit harder, like with the game. But it also has its own like really interesting stories. Like you have the Ellie and Dina stuff and the Abby and Lev. So uh, on so many levels, I just really like The Last of Us narrative and i just love how it like really i've never been so invested in a game like when when i was playing as ellie i just wanted this revenge so bad and as you play as abby you're like damn 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 i shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have done that 
And I just think that's, you know, if people think that's simplistic, I think to actually pull, pull that off is so hard. To make people like Abby after what she did, I think is is such an achievement. And the fact that I, I probably do prefer her to the other characters in the game, despite what she does. And, and she not only does the one thing at the start, she does it to another another person as well who you really like in the game and just making yourself and, make, and the way it makes you care about characters you don't spend a lot of time with like Manny, Owen, Jesse and um, Tommy and stuff I, I just think it's so it's so well written and one of the weirdest criticisms of The Last of Us 2 is that it's badly written and I'm thinking are they talking about the dialogue because I think Naughty Dog dialogue is literally some of the best game dialogue like conversations between characters are, are so good um, and if we talk about narrative I mean, you don't have to like The Last of Us 2. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, you can totally not like this game. But the the criticism that it's badly written, I think, is is weird. Like, you cannot like the story. You cannot like the way it goes. But to say it's badly written, like, it's incoherent, it's very clear, like, you have the themes of revenge and redemption and the parallels between, you know, the characters. And Ellie is at, like, a different part of this same revenge journey as Abby was. And it's very, like, nicely fits together. It's it's very well written in that regard, even if you don't like it. So I think that's one of my favourite narratives in that, like, just how much chances it took really drew me in. In terms of other game narratives, Red Dead 2 was solid, but I preferred Red Dead 1 a lot more. Um, I'm trying to think in recent times. I really liked the last couple hours of Death Stranding as well. Um, old Metal Gear games like Peace Walker... MGS3, very good narratives as well. I'm trying to think of some other ones, but um, GTA 4 was really solid, actually. For a Grand Theft Auto game, that was, that was a very solid story. I wouldn't mind GTA going back to like a darker, more serious tone. Um, other than that, I'm thinking of like actual narratives um, themselves, in terms of like actual, compared to like actual game narratives I enjoy playing, like actual narratives I, I really like. That's a hard one, but I think Last of Us has, has done a lot for me compared to other games in terms of like how much I enjoyed it comparatively. L the Witcher Three, there we go. I played that like four times, so like completed it four times. That that is a very good story, um, as well. And oh, Cyberpunk. Um, a lot of you wouldn't have played that because obviously of the controversy, but Cyberpunk has an insanely good story, like actual really good narrative, and it's crazy because it has multiple endings and multiple like. Um, sort of differences in, in the endings and stuff. So Cyberpunk has a very good story, and it's I'd say CD Projekt Red and Naughty Dog write the best um, dialogue and stories, um, and the world building is really good in the in The Witcher as well um, as as it is of Cyberpunk. So I'd say they're my favorite game narratives. Not necessarily like my favorite games ever in terms of like everything, but narratives I, I think they're very good, um, and I think Last of Us. Like, people talk about Red Dead Redemption 2 being the best narrative. I think Last of Us it is... I think it shows what video games can be, but I why I'm so frustrated at the reaction to Last of Us is I think it shows gaming as an audience is just not mature enough for a game that doesn't try and give them fan service. And the annoying thing is, is that a lot of people, even like Angry Joe, who turned into like a total chud with this game, is that Last of Us... and It's like creative stuff does not exist to please fans say i wrote say i wrote a book and all you guys who read it right now absolutely loved it right and you love the main character you're like i totally identify with this guy i love him and in the next book i don't really care how you feel about it i'm just telling my story and you guys all like hate it i i have no obligation to people who like the first one naughty dog like have no obligation to pander to you with the second game if that's not the story they want to tell, they don't have to go around and give you fan service to make you feel better. It's not like... Um... And the thing is as well, Last of Us 1 did not give a shit about what the player wanted with the ending. You could tell, as a young person, I didn't want that ending. As an older person, I can understand that ending way more coming from like someone who's a... No, I'm not a father, but like a parent's perspective on the events of that game. Um... But yeah, The Last of Us doesn't give a shit because in, in End of Last of Us 2, before the last act, something happens that you don't want to happen. And loads of things in that game happen that you don't want to happen because the game is not pandering to what you want to happen. And that's what I think gamers have a real problem with. Um, and I think it's a, it's a problem with nerd culture in general in terms of 
I think film film communities as a community do not have this problem because people who are really into films in general, I think, understand that films aren't there to satisfy your fan service. Where I think fil- fans of nerd media and nerd films don't understand this because they're so used to being pandered, pandered all the time with fan service. And uh, that's why, you know, they hated The Last Jedi. And I, I don't like The Last Jedi, but the criticism I have of it... Um, aren't the same as theirs, you know. Um, and I think a lot of the criticism for, for Last Jedi is it wasn't fan service. And I think that's, you know, the problem with the gaming community is, even back then, like, can you imagine if Metal Gear Solid 2 came out today? Can you imagine the reactionaries? Hideo Kojima lied. Um, SJW, Soy Boy, Raiden is the actual main character instead of um, instead of Snake. That totally would happen. And it feels like the internet has just made this really annoying thing because... I, as someone who loves video games and I think they're so underappreciated as like an entertainment medium to tell serious stories or be like good educational devices I'm so frustrated at like broad sections of the community just not being able to just understand that games do not exist to pander to them for fan service um, but just because a lot of AAA games like to do this they expect it from all of them and I'm glad that The Last of Us actually did really well in general and with, like, critics and everything because that gives me a bit of hope. But the general reaction, like, this insane hit... Like, it genuinely was... I miss what my video is on tomorrow. The hysteria around it is is just crazy. Like, the fact that they couldn't accept this. And to me, when I found... when You know, when I played the game and got exposed to the controversy, I was happy because I've played so many games that are so safe. And here's a good example, right? Um, in Spider-Man PS4, there's a moment where there's an explosion and Peter Parker gets thrown to the ground and he looks like he might be dead. Uh, This is in the first Spider-Man game. And you start playing as Miles Morales. And in my head, I was thinking, hang on a sec, have they like pulled a trick? Like, Is the game actually about Miles Morales and Peter Parker's going to die in the middle of it? Now, I would love that so much. And I wouldn't love it because I hate Peter Parker and I hate Spider-Man. It's like, I would love the balls on Insomniac to do that. To be like, we're going to do something different here. Like, Peter Parker, who you've been playing as for about 10 hours, is going to die. Like, unceremoniously going to be killed. And you're going to play as Miles Morales for the rest of the game. And I feel like that's what um, The Last of Us did. And you would know that the reaction to Spider-Man, if they did that, would be very similar to The Last of Us one. So it's it's very frustrating as someone who, who like, really loves video games um, and feels like they're very underappreciated as, like, you know, having more like serious messages and themes and being more creative. And that's why like God of War, um, I hope doesn't feel this burden because it was so universally loved. I hope the new God of War doesn't play it safe. And it's like, oh, we've got appeal to the fans who love the first one. Just like, I, I am sure they'll do this, but just like tell your own story and fuck what the so-called fans think of it. I'm, you know, if you like The Last of Us, the first one, if you if you only like one character, Joel, then there's something wrong with you and you didn't really appreciate the game because the game isn't just about one character. And The Last of Us, in my mind, is a bit more like, um, you know, Philip K. Dick work where it's more about the world building. I feel like Last of Us is a lot about the world rather than the characters as well. Anyway, that's my little rant on, on, on shit like that and my favourite narratives. I, I get very frustrated. I feel like... Fans often feel like they own too much of entertainment, um, especially stuff that is like very original, like video games often are. And, and fans often think, especially I think with video games, because you play it, you think you have more ownership over it than you do. And, you know, it, it, it's fine not to like it. Like if you don't like The Last of Us 2, that is absolutely 100% fine. But the thing is, I, I think you should at least respect this game didn't go out of its way to pander to you and give you what you want, like a feel-good story where you literally do the same game over again or something. Gun. Is Gun that cowboy game? Um... Oh, Katie, thanks so much for the donation. That was way too much. <laughs> 20 bucks. Um, thanks so much. I super appreciate it. Um, so you're saying, I'm used to gro- gross bits, desensitized to like shit, but uh, rude people are half of me. 
The last guest was banging on the door after we closed because I missed a hair on her chin. I didn't. It was under her ear. What? <laughs> so why did she think it was... Um, why did she think it was under her chin if it was behind her ear? I need to hear the rest of the story. But yeah, that 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 is pretty awful, bro. Like, that's why I hope I never have to go back to work and just deal with really shitty people. It's the worst part of this stuff. Um, all right, so I'm going to read some more comments. Did I play on easy mode? No, I played on hard mode, I think. Um... All right, you guys are talking about theory. <laughs> Someone's saying, killing dogs in Last of Us bad, killing foreigners in COD good. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I have never read a single page of theory. The th okay, we talk about this bit as well, but like, I think reading theory is really overrated, and this is a guy who has like masters in international relations where you literally just read theory. I wish the ending of The Last of Us was optional. I don't, because it's like, again, it's not a choose your adventure story it's not the witcher free it's literally like here is your story like i didn't want to leave the farm um towards the end i didn't want that to happen but it happens and that's the thing the last of us in general you don't get what you want and that's why there's no choice i think um <laughs> there's far cry 6 yeah it's already caused a bit of a shit storm um yeah, Curio is cool. We we talked about The Last of Us a tiny bit. I think she subscribes to me, um, or she did before. I might have turned their, sub their subscriptions to private, but um, yeah, uh, they make good content. I like the Zack Snyder stuff. Um, most people went through blind, felt that way. That's good. My, the thing is, in my real life, loads of my friends who are, are pretty casual gamers played The Last of Us 2 because they played 1 and they really liked it. And and I just, it, it, even like, you know, I wouldn't, I would say they're like fairly socially progressive, but they're really dumb about politics, a lot of them. And they didn't give a shit about like the transgender um, story arc and stuff like that. Um, Hellblade. Uh, I haven't played Hellblade. Oh, E3. Yeah, Tom. E3 was so bad this year. Like, so disappointing. Nintendo's um, Direct was super solid. I'm going to get Mario Golf. But um, other than that, like, there's not too much. You know, Bethesda Xbox was super disappointing. And I could go on a rant about how crap Xbox are because you buy Bethesda for like £7 billion pounds or dollars. And. You know what you've announced and shown off is really not going to do anything to shift the balance between PlayStation and Xbox. God of War was solid. I need to go back and play it again. I'm more into Norse mythology after playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla and watching Vikings, so um, I should give it another chance. To be honest, um, I didn't love it though. I think it was the pacing. I did all the side stuff apart from the Valkyries. The pacing I feel like was very bad. In some places, like I hated going through that mine um, when you can't cross the mountain path. Um, story was a little underwhelming. Like I enjoyed the characters a lot. Um, story was a bit underwhelming, but I'm I think it's laid a really good foundation for two. I also think this. I think God of War is actually one of the most overhyped games I've ever played. Actually, and this is from someone who really likes it. I give it like an eight out of ten. But I think the, making you know the story more like Last of Us style mature made people think this is like the best thing ever or something but um yeah yeah angry giant like a child yeah he, he, it was actually his 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 reaction to the last of us in general is just so embarrassing and i'm glad i'm glad he doesn't like me because i called him out for i'm um, simping for the national card um oh yeah blake that's unfortunate i'm hyped for the director's cup death stranding though um So I'm reading some more um, SJW soy boy writing, but you you know you know they'd be calling him like um like male feminist. <laughs> that could be a fun video. What, imagine if um, imagine if um, <laughs> MGS two came out in 2021. Oh man, Jewish waffle. That is the dumbest comment. And this is something I'm gonna respond to tomorrow. 
The problem with the Last of Us Two is that it doesn't tell us it doesn't tell a story. It tells a player a BS feminist message uh, by killing off male characters and having a pregnant woman and shoot. And again, the pregnant woman. I literally just replayed this bit. The pregnant woman, like the the massively pregnant woman, Mel, is in a shootout with you guys for like ten minutes, and then Dina literally does not do shootouts when she's pregnant. So, like when you find out she's pregnant. So I don't understand this point. It, it's like. Jewish Waffle, I'm actually really sad for people like you who actually think this way. Like, it's actually embarrassing for one thing, but, like, how firstly dumb must you be and how sad must your life be that because there's two pregnant characters, you think it's, like, a feminist game? <laughs> yeah, I think it lasts us too well, age really well. I, I said that when it when it um came out. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk about reading theory. Sorry, I, I completely forgot. Um, let's read some more comments. Oh, let's start reading more comments. Um, <laughs> can't wait for Far Cry 6 to be misinterpreted by conservatives in five years. <laughs> Yeah, that's another one. But it's weird because it seems the director of the game is Iranian. Um, so they were talking about, like, revolution being bad or something. But then they're saying it's inspired by the Cuban revolution and the dictator isn't meant to be Castro. And it's inspired by the communist rebels and it's inspired by the revolutions of the 50s and 60s. So I asked this before in my Far Cry video. Is there any revolution in the 50s and 60s that is prominent that isn't a Marxist revolution. So Cuba is obviously the 50s. Um, Vietnam is 50s and 60s and 70s. And I'm trying to think of like other prominent ones in the world. That, uh, you know, are we talking about like the Hungarian uprising or something, which was like primarily led by like fascist revolutionaries and stuff? I don't know. Oh damn, Katie, was she like um, mentally stable? She spent 20 minutes closing, banging on the door and shouting. Why did you let them back in? Um, she wanted more taken off than she paid for. Yeah, the Last of Us 2 was, the thing is, Last of Us 2 reminds me of like, like a Greek tragedy in a way, in that it's just like, it's just meant to be shit for everyone. And it's meant to be like this type of ending. Um, wait, which, which game are we talking about? But yeah, most most conservatives don't really understand. <laughs> it's not like the Bioshock video I made. Like uh, trying to say it's like pro conservative is just fucking weird. <laughs> All right, I'm going to talk about the theory stuff. One sec. Um, Choosing a naughty dog. Choosing an enemy is never a naughty dog thing. Yeah, play some Uncharted games and then move into The Last of Us. Um, Katie, The Last of Us 2 has so many accessibility options. You Anyone could play that. Um, the Last of Us 1 isn't so kind. But yeah, Last of Us 2 won so many awards for accessibility. Like, I put on... Um, I put on a couple just for fun. Like, I put on if you swipe on the touchpad, it'll go into slow motion. When I'm, that's when I'm fighting like zombies in like a dark place because I just fucking hate them popping out. You can put on like infinite ammo or like enemies don't spot you if you're like crouched or something. It's like very forgiving. Alright, I'm going to talk about the theory stuff. Uh, the new Battlefield looks good. I love Battlefield 1. Battlefield 5 was fine, but uh, the, the, I don't like the modern Battlefields because uh, it feels like I can get killed from literally anywhere. Okay, I want to talk about the theory stuff. All right. I didn't, the front desk folks, the clients can be so entitled. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that the other day because I saw a TikTok of a woman who got a, like bad customer service at Starbucks and she was bragging that she was going to report them. And it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I don't know how other people react, right? I've never reported an employee for anything. When I get bad food at a restaurant, unless it's like really bad, I, if it's just okay, I generally won't send it back because, like, 
I know they'll get in like a lot of shit and stuff with like the cook and everything. Cause my, my parents used to work in restaurants and stuff. Um, yeah, so I have I I, I I remember me and my girlfriend actually got a bad bad food the other day and we sent it back, but then we we were like pretty like unapologetic. We didn't ask for a refund, they gave us one anyway. But um most of the time I'll if it's really fucking bad, I just won't tip much. But I pretty much always tip anyway. Uh even though you know in the UK it's a bit less and you don't have to really. But I've never reported an employee, even even at, like we all had like bad experience with people, and it's just crazy like that you would use like, this tiny bit of power to try and make someone's life a lot shitter when they're working a job they might not even like and stuff. Anyway, very annoying. I don't know what... What do you guys do if you have bad service? I, would you guys ever report the waiter? Unless they're, like, really hostile and, like, maybe saying really offensive shit. Yeah, Angry Joe's a chud for that stuff. Um. Okay, so I didn't want to leave the farm either, but I'm glad I did. The end was like commando. Yeah, it w that was fun to let loose with the MP5. Using the MP5 in the story of New Game Plus is so OP. <laughs> um, I right, read some more comments. I just don't go back. Anyone who makes big deals about service at a restaurant has never worked in food service. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, lol, I hate zombies. Is there a moment they just ignore me? Yeah, um, Katie, there are some like pretty scary bits in The Last of Us. Um, I'm not very good at scary stuff. <laughs> Resident Evil and The Last of Us is like as much as I can tolerate. Not the new Resident Evil ones. Um, Katie's saying... I would never be that fucking arsehole at a restaurant. I guess if they say slurs and... Yeah, that, that's the only way I'd ever report someone. I wouldn't report a work wait, I'd let them know the issue or load a tip. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so someone was asking, do you have to read theory? Uh, and um, I was saying, okay, so I, I did my degree in history and then my, my master's in international relations. There was way more theory for international relations. So you had to read like Gramsci, Karl Marx, um, Lenin and stuff. Um, and what I will say is that theory like isn't the be all end all theories are actually pretty boring i found like a lot of it kind of hard to get through like especially when you got loads and loads of reading and and i think karl marx for me like some of it was quite like or well, i thought karl marx or gramsci i really really did not enjoy um the best person i've read for theory which is actually interesting probably because i love history um is probably lenin um i think it's what he wrote in 1917 it's about like world war one and it's about like basically being a war for capital and stuff. And I really like um, that piece of work. I, I really forgot what it's called. But in terms of theory, like you, you don't you don't need theory. It, it can be helpful uh, at understanding historical events. Like Gramsci is obviously linked to like Mussolini's Italy. Lenin is, you know, World War One and, uh, you know, 1920s Russia and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting to read and, and it's important. But the thing is. You don't need to read it. And I, 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 I would die on the hill, but you don't need to read theory. And theory is very boring. And you don't need to read theory to have good politics and have moral politics. I'd say reading history and reading political authors, um, and I'm talking about theory as like ideological theory, like communist theory or, or like Marxist, Leninist theory and stuff like that. I'm not talking about like political thinkers who write stuff. So, like, I, I like reading a lot of analysis by, like, you know, journalists or academics and stuff. And I don't consider that political theory. More contemporary stuff. So, educating your stuff on issues and educating yourself on history and, and, like, you know, stuff like that is important. I've never been big into philosophy. Like, I don't... I've never read much philosophy. Who did I read at uni? I think a, Kant was one I read for an essay or something. So, I'm telling you someone who, like, had to actually, like write essays about contrasting theories including international relations theory and i think it like i like international relations theory like learning about realism is very interesting about um the lack of morality on the international stage or believing there isn't there's just like no morality in international relations that's all interesting and stuff but it's not like completely necessary to understand the world so i'd say history 
keeping up with like developments in the world and, and learning about power dynamics, like institutional racism, how racism was created in history and stuff like that. That's all very important. Um, reading Karl Marx and Lenin and Gramsci, it's all well and good. Um, but if you don't want to do it, I seriously wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Like seriously, like I, I'm, I'm, you know, if you want to be the next Lenin, which you probably won't be, like go for it. If you want to be the next Karl Marx or something, go for it. But like, again, I don't, I don't think you need to read it to be honest. And the thing is, uh, I, this is a bit different because you know, I'm not someone who has like a really defined political ideology. A lot of leftist YouTubers are like, I'm an anarchist, and I, or I'm like libertarian something something, or I'm like Marxist Leninist something. I'm not like any of those things, really. And I've always said, like, I don't have a massive political label. So I always say, like, if someone calls me communist or Marxist, I don't really give a shit. You can call me that if you want. Um, I would describe myself as left-wing anti-capitalist because that's my main thing. I'm anti-capitalist and I'm left-wing generally. But I'm not like, if you ask me, like, are you Leninist, Marxist-Leninist or some shit like that, like, I'm not going to say yes because I, I, I don't have an ideology like that, which I fundamentally believe in. Who are these people looking for attention? Um, sorry, I'm just cleaning up the chat quick. Sorry, just let's clean up the chat. Um, wait, who are people? What are people arguing about? Um, yeah, he quit. <laughs> Someone's a bit late. So um, I have anarchist leanings, but I'd be open to anything more left wing than what we have at the moment. Katie's saying there's lots of analysis online that makes it easier to understand without getting down and reading the text. Yeah, I, I honestly. I don't think you've got to um, you've got to just sit down and read Karl Marx and stuff. David hates reading. I don't hate reading. I really like reading. I just don't have time to read ever. I really like audiobooks. Um, like my favorite audiobook I listened to was Oliver Stone's autobiography, uh, um, which he narrated himself. I absolutely love that. Um, and annoyingly, I was like. I really want to read Edward Snowden's book because I just really want an inside look at all this surveillance shit. And then I go to the audiobook and Edward Snowden, if you listen to him talk on a like Joe Rogan podcast, he's got a very like good voice for, for audiobooks. And then like I go on it and it's narrated by someone who's not him. <laughs> so I'm like, come on, like Edward Snowden. Why, why did you not narrate your own audiobook? It, you have a good voice for it. And, and on Joe Rogan, you talk for like three hours straight. <laughs> Okay, so I think theory can help us articulate our experiences more, but um, work at any sort of this job and you get a lot more practice. I think real life is just like important for a lot of people. Um, but the thing is, I guess it's like the notion that I'm I'm working from is that like we all have critical thinking skills and it's like we can we can all tie back um, our working conditions to the political system. And I think maybe like the that's a bit of privilege in that you need to actually learn critical thinking skills first. And it's it's frustrating because critical thinking is often just tied with higher education, which it shouldn't be. Critical thinking should be taught from a very young age, but it's not. It's kind of left till you're a lot older, whether you know you trust certain sources or how far can you trust certain things or realizing the power dynamics in a country and stuff. Um, which I think critical thinking is a lot more important often than theory and stuff because even if you know you're not going into academia or journalism or something you need critical thinking just to like tie certain aspects of your life back to you know i guess your political power in terms of just having this vote in this you know oligarchical system where it doesn't actually really matter <laughs> um i listen to audiobooks at work i used to listen to loads of podcasts at work but yeah it's a good place to do it Uh, 
Blake's about to read a Noam Chomsky book on anarcho-syndicalism. That's cool. Noam Chomsky's that person who's like a living legend, uh, but I've like never fucking read anything he's ever put out. <laughs> um, my problem with reading is that I'll start thinking about something else while I'm reading and I completely forgot what I just read. Um, I don't really have that problem, but my, my main problem is I get a bit bored and just want to go on my phone or something. I, I'm really warped by digital, like, technology stuff. Isn't it like 4 a.m. over there? Go to bed. It's 3.30, but no. Um, Alright, we need some more. Is the sun rising? No. It's pretty dark still. What are my thoughts on what's going on in Colombia? I'm pretty ignorant about Colombia, but like... It's just fucked up what's happening there, obviously. Just, like, the insane brutality. <laughs> okay, you you went to a Noam Chomsky book, hoping it'd be narrated by him, but it was just some rando. Yeah, I hate that shit. Um, but, yeah, the Israel stuff's fucked up again. But the one thing I was... Because some people talked about that earlier. But the one thing I'll say is that the conversation has changed so much on Israel... Um, even the last couple like months it's just drastically shifted like <laughs> I saw my girlfriend liking something about like Zionism being like racist or some shit and I was like damn <laughs> it's like you wouldn't you no way you'd say this like four months ago but I'm gonna make a video on Joe Rogan being pretty cool I made a video on him like a year or so ago uh, talking about him calling out Israel all the lies he was fed as a kid in like Jewish school and stuff um, so do that next week I think But um, what people are saying you should read through. I don't. I don't think you should. Um, maybe that's a privileged position because I've done it. But as someone I, I who's done it, I don't think it's like the be all end all and stuff. Uh, yeah, Sebastian. I I basically in my video on Monday I reacted to comments defending him. So if you want that, go watch that video if you haven't already. Um. If Joe Biden falls in the forest, it's <laughs> that just sounds like something he'd say, isn't it? There's really fucking funny um, Metal Gear Solid videos from Metal Gear Solid 2 of Raiden talking to Joe Biden like he's the colonel. So good. Oh, everyone, prematurely, because I'll do my 35k stream on Tuesday, but look, this is the this is the 30k chocolate orange, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully at the weekend I'll be buying the, the 35k one. And hopefully before before the at the end at the end of the year I want to have two more chocolate oranges at least, and because the thing is if I keep growing at the same rate I'll be on forty seven by the end of the year, which is a nice nice number that is all dependent on me growing that long. Um, in the back of my mind I'm like potentially fifty, but I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. <laughs> forty five would be amazing. Uh, considering I started the year with thirteen. Having 45 would be totally insane. I've already, obviously, like, what's that? Um, 13, 26. 29. Nearly tripled the amount. If, if I get another 4K, it's triple, triple the subs. Fuck the orange, I want I want the piece. Um, I want that peach. I don't think there's a chocolate peach. Sorry, I'm just, uh, just banning some people. Okay. Um. Sorry, just reading some more comments. <laughs> Joe Rogan needs to read theory. Yeah, but Joe Rogan is like he's got like a head like a sponge where he just agrees with like the last thing he hears, pretty much. Um read some more comments. Orange life, yeah. <laughs> Nice and clean in here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, there's one guy left. 
Let's go. <laughs> Why would you wait, like... How many minutes am I banning for? Like, five minutes just to comment again. They were just trolling the chat, just saying the same shit over and over again. So I just got rid of them. But yeah, the Five Nights at Freddy's thing is just... The, the thing is, there's, I think it's important to talk about because it's just ridiculous in terms of, like, people trying to def say, like, political donations is the same as, like, like political views in terms of, like, a really binary choice at, like, the voting booth or something when it's not so um yeah it's 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 a ridiculous you know kind of thing but i like covering this stuff just because you can see how crazy people's communities can go like you will see with a lot of the comments here anyway i should probably um should probably wrap it up in a sec just because i gotta plan my video for tomorrow because england are playing scotland at eight um, and go watch it somewhere, but I've got to have the video recorded and uploaded and probably the thumbnail done before I leave. So, um, yeah, I probably got to go off soon just to plan it out. Um, do you think he voted for these people with the intention of harming the LGBT? I don't, I think that's kind of irrelevant because, because they're so, you know, a, a core belief of the GOP is being anti LGBT. So if you're voting for them, you're generally, you know, you're okay enough with voting for them for other reasons that you're okay enough to throw the LGBT community under the bus. So, you know. All right. Um, so I think I'll leave it there. I think I'm almost done with Death Stranding. That's cool, Blake. You've got to tell me what you think of the ending on the next stream. Um, Nico, it will be on the Cavernacle Extra, my second channel, hopefully at least by tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, thanks for nice words. Uh, yeah, Blake, you got to let me know about Death Stranding next time. I love Death Stranding. i got to make my video on it. <laughs> but I think I need to play it again first. Um, but yeah, tomorrow's video is going to be just reacting to like one year anniversary of the chud drama about the last of us two um i'm running out of video ideas but i think on monday i'm gonna do a seth rogan video and talk about israel but a bit more um but yeah that's about it anyway uh thanks so much for donations katie and the other person i forgot their name sorry <laughs> sorry if you're still here but thanks so much for the donations really appreciate that um go watch my video on this stuff on monday if you want like a longer one and yeah appreciate the support as usual thanks for having me hit 35k finally did it took two months which was not too bad all things considered felt like a long time like getting from like the 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 first number to the f the five like the 20 to 5 to 5 25k to the 30 to 35k it feels like a lot longer than going from 30 f and a lot less satisfying than going from like 35k to 40k um so let's hit 40k by August. Is that possible? The end of August. So the 1st of September. Um, let's hit 40k. <laughs> or at least nearly be there. Anyway, thanks so much guys for tuning in tonight. Um, and the video, tune in to the video tomorrow. Uh, stream shall be next Tuesday and it can be a nice little celebration of 35k finally. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much guys.